And at this stage, the minister is trying to get Ireland into the Security Council of the United Nations. We're trying to get in there. And I, I think it's very likely we will get in. But I, I, I don't honestly, I don't like the word boycott. I, I think it's a little too strong. Isn't that what you're saying we should do, though? I, 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 would, I would like to see if, if it were possible. It can't be the responsibility of RT. It has to be a state-inspired a state decision. And what I would like to see is the state, and I think it would enhance our prospects of getting on the Security Council in the United Nations, I think the state would be, would be well advised to say, we might take, thank you for the invitation to participate in the Eurovision Song Contest, we might take a pass this year, and we might gracefully sit it out until next year, there without are... using the word boycott. There are other countries who have human rights records that we mightn't approve of or agree with. There might be sporting events in Russia, for example, that Irish athletes will be competing in, the same in China. Are you saying that we should not attend or cover those events? I think, I mean, you mentioned earlier on the, the, the Holocaust and you mentioned what happened to the Jewish people during the Holocaust. And if you take any, any major, be it a sport, South Africa, remember, People said, we're not going to go for sporting events, we're not going to go for music. And the young women in Dunn's stores in Dublin were significant in terms of the end of apartheid. Go back to 1936 when the Olympic Games were staged in Berlin. And again, the, at that time there was a major problem for the Jewish people. And the Third Reich had come down heavily on them before the tens of thousands of competitors fans, etc., arrived in Berlin, the signs for Juden Verboten, etc., etc., were taken down. People went, went to the Olympics and went back saying, what a wonderful race, we had a wonderful welcome, they were accorded an unbelievable welcome, uh, what a fantastic welcome, it's a fantastic place, there's no sign of any disruption of any race or people or discrimination, and then afterwards, as soon as they were gone, the signs went back up. And I think, I doubt if when people go to Israel now for the Eurovision, they will be shown the separation wall, they'll be shown the settlements, they'll be brought to the borders of Gaza. But my question to you is, where do we draw the line? Do we now say, well, we won't go to China because we don't like what they do Look, in certain... I think you stand up, and I honestly think you brought up the point of the Security Council. I think if we stood up and said, we'll take a pass... I don't, I don't mean boycott Israel, I don't, I don't mean that. We'll take a pass on this. I think a lot of people, a lot of other countries who will have the vote on whether we get into the Security Council or not would be very positively disposed towards us. Mike Murphy, thank you very much. Well, in a statement to this programme, RTE said it's not withdrawing from the Eurovision contest. In fact, it's currently inviting songwriters and performers to submit a song to be considered to represent Ireland. But RTE has confirmed that there will not be any sanction against anyone from within RTE who doesn't wish to travel to the Eurovision Song Contest in Israel on conscientious grounds. Well, we're joined by Patrick Monaghan from the Christian Friends of Israel. Safe to say you do not agree with Mike Murphy that we should take a pass on Eurovision 2019 because it's in Israel. Yeah, absolutely. I think Mike is, uh, he used the apartheid word and is, uh, by, by inference is comparing Israel to South Africa. And there's absolutely no comparison. Israel is a, a democracy. Um, I just had an email from a friend who lives in a 90% Muslim Arab village of Abu Ghosh. And he made the case in four points that I'd love to share with your, with your viewers of why Israel is not an apartheid state. And his first point is that in an apartheid state, that minorities do not have citizenship and cannot vote. He said all of his Muslim uh, friends in Abu Ghosh vote, and, it, and it, they have the vote, and they exercise it. Secondly, he said that in the apartheid state, minorities are not represented in government. Since the founding of Israel, the Arab Muslim citizens of Israel have been represented in the Knesset, and currently there are 17 Muslim members in the Knesset. That wouldn't happen, have happened in the old South so, Africa. So you're, you're, you're friend's basic point is we're dealing with a democracy here. But Mike Murphy isn't alone here. There are a number of people, well-known people, who join him and say, look, Ireland should not go. What do you say, to, what do you say to them? I, I, I'm, I'm really sad that Mike has joined the Irish-Palestinian Solidarity Campaign in calling for a boycott. And he's, he's profiled on the Irish-Palestinian Solidarity Campaign website this evening when I checked before I came in here. And, and whether he, he doesn't want to call for a boycott, 
but they're using him to call for a boycott. And they are stating on that website that uh, Israel is the same as South Africa. And they are wrong. That is a blatant lie on which they're basing this boycott. The, every single, in, in an apartheid state, it's, it's a fact that the education system, the beaches, the parks are, are segregated. In Israel or not. Any beach you go, go to or par, public park in Israel, you'll see Muslim families and Jewish families enjoying the facilities together. That's not an apartheid state. We had even had a, 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 an Israeli Muslim represent Israel in 2009. And just the last point that I may make is that, and you rightly brought up very clearly in your interview with, with Mike, Turkey invaded Cyprus and a year later, the, uh, their Eurovision entry, no one called for the um, boycott of Turkey. You rightly highlighted Ukraine, uh, with Russia vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. And Israel has been singled out here, and that's, in my opinion, that's, that's anti-Semitism. Okay. All right. And he was very clear when he was speaking to me that he is not uh, an anti-Semitic person, just to make that clear. And I don't think you're accusing him of that, Patrick. No, not, not personally, but our government has signed up to the International Declaration against anti-Semitism. And it's one of 31 countries. Okay. And it states very clearly that wrong uh, criticism of Israel and singling it out unfairly is anti-Semitism. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you for making your point so clearly, Patrick Monaghan. Thank you. Now, next.